this hour, word of God this hour. From the Father, the word of the power of God. But we invite you to participate in learning, even if you don't understand it yet, at least learn what it means to be a soldier, a disciple in the kingdom of God. It's semi volunteer based. Why I say semi? Because the Lord Jesus did not force it. He didn't say you must be a disciple. No. He said, if anyone will be my disciple, immediately, first thing, take up your instrument of death, your cross, and follow me. Follow me means you look at what he did, how he did it, where he did it, when. You look at his methods, his modus of operation, then copy it. Copy those who copy him. Paul said it that way, imitate me, 1 Corinthians 11, as I imitate Christ. Because we don't see the Lord Jesus physically, but there are those who imitate him. So the best and closest thing you can have to being able to imitate Christ, apart from scripture, is to look for those who are imitating him the most. But how will you know they are imitating him the most? Is by looking at the scriptures and seeing how he operated. Then look for those that are practicing that the most. Then copy them because it's easier to copy what you see than what you hear about. So you imitate them as they imitate Christ. You hang around them. You sit in their meetings. You watch. You learn. You pay attention to what they say. In the process, you will find yourself with a cross. And you will be following Christ. And you will live with the constant awareness that you may lose your life any moment. Not your physical life necessarily, even though sometimes and many times that has been the case. Many have lost their lives for Christ. But you die daily, like Paul said. How? That girl may spit on you and the Holy Spirit will say, leave this place. You're dying. You feel like, like, just kill me. And God's answer is, I am. That's exactly what I'm doing. I am killing you. Then I tell you, there will be a cross. So multiple events, you will stand, there will be an opportunity to make 2 million here. There will be an opportunity to lose 20,000 here. And God will tell you to take this one. And the briefer you've worked with God, the more you scratch your head. Many people at the beginning, you bind the voice, you bind it, I bind you, every spirit of poverty. I bind you, I silence you in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit will say, have you finished? Don't call me names. I said you should leave that place. Go here. Say, God, I'll be losing money in this job. What the, eh? But you know the thing about being a soldier? Never. They don't discuss in military dealings, except your commanding officer permits you, offers the chance. And since our Lord is kind and gentle, sometimes he allows a little, but many times he doesn't. People say, I'm praying, I'm praying. I've looked at people many times, say, you're praying about what? Has he answered you? Say, no. Say, and he will never, your hair will turn white. You never get an answer. Don't you know the answer? You are, you are asking, so you avoid doing what he said. Many times you don't answer. In the military, they give orders. And then if it's a situation where, you know, and the man keeps standing there and the senior officer says, soldier, do you have something to say? Or he says nothing. Or the soldier says, please, sir, permission to speak. And if they say no, he goes, yes, sir, and walks away. All that willfulness, my will, my will, what I want, it doesn't happen in the military. And this is why there are so few disciples on the earth. Because you can't take orders. It tells you, stop, leave that job, leave that place. Or I don't end that relationship, that moment. You turn into a six-month dragon. You're not a soldier. You may have signed up to be a soldier. You may have put down your name when he was recruiting. You may have heard a message like I'm preaching today. I may preach. I don't know if I emphasize it. And you can stand up and walk away. Most of you, the vast majority of people never join the military. Never. Ever. Ever. They live and die civilians. The only thing that makes some of us recruiters 
have to explain is this. Please, can you at least stop looking forward to the rewards of a soldier? You will never have it. You never qualified. You never signed up for the military. You were a civilian. You enjoyed the benefits of your country and the citizenship thereof. That's all you can ever have. If you have heard a servant of God say, if you're not a disciple, you're not a real Christian. I beg to defer, okay? I'm quick to point it out because many sincere servants of God say this. Because they don't understand the distinction. So they look at scripture, they see different things and they say, ah, but this is a must now. No, they are mistaken. They are well-intentioned, but they are mistaken. You can be a civilian till you die. It's just that you likely die faster. Your chances of death are higher. In every world war, more civilians die than soldiers. Ah, ah, but I tell you the soldiers are going to fight. Yes, but more civilians die. You have no weapons, you have no training, you have no skill, you have no ability. You are weak and pathetic. Once in a while, there's a top so, uh, civilian. They help during the war. They are not useless at all. But you don't become a disciple because you're a believer. You just became part of God's holy nation. That's all you are. Enjoy your country. The goods and all that. You go to the same market with the soldier. It's the same market. The difference is they'll put the soldier in a barracks he did not build. So he'll get accommodation. He'll get payments. He'll get certain allowances. His children, okay? So there's benefits of being a soldier. You're not a soldier or a disciple because you're a preacher. There are many civilian preachers. It's obvious. Look at their life. It's as comfortable as it comes. They live for comfort. They live for luxury. A very significant reality of the soldier's life is limited luxury. So whenever I come across someone that seems, oh, he loves God and he loves luxury at the same time. He that loves pleasure will be poor. Oil and wine. Spiritually, they tend to be poor. How are you going to be a soldier and also live for luxury? How many times you see a soldier walking around with sneakers and wearing different kinds of clothes? No, they typically wear one kind of clothes, except they unfollow on leave. They wear one kind of clothes. They, they don't think about clothes. Soldiers don't think about dressing. They died to all of that as they came to the Lord. They died to it. Now we are talking not of physical soldiers, but spiritual, but you can easily draw analogies. A soldier's life is rugged. It's hard. They could call them in the middle of the night. They never ever say, who is calling now? They don't, you don't think. There's no thinking. There's response time. That's what there is. A response time. As you're getting the call, you're jumping. Yes, sir. You're saluting in your room, in your boxers. You're dressing. You are running. There's no thinking. You don't say, who wakes people up by 3 a.m.? This is not fair. Now, nobody, nobody is discussing that discussion with you. What are you doing there? Get out of the barracks and go home to your mommy. Nobody does that. The life of a soldier has, is very little, has very little to compare with the life of a civilian. And I repeat, this is why most people will never be disciples of the Lord Jesus. They will never embrace the possibility of dying daily. That God can tell you, take all of that, give it to him. I repeat, you don't have to be a preacher to be a disciple at all. That's like saying you have to be a commander in the army to be a soldier. That's not true. Preachers are just leaders in the army, or at least they were supposed to be leaders in the army. A preacher should be a soldier. And it's very sad when you find civilian preachers one of the great horrors of denominationalism you want branches so you pick civilians everywhere and put them in authority and the consequences are endless the negative consequences because you're opening branch after branch so you grab any civilian come you place them in charge you're in charge the guy has gone through no soldiering no discipling does not know the life of the soldier comes all right praise the lord opens one verse has not gone to boot camp has not been put through the mail by god and next thing is sleeping with the choir members 
It's not training. So the things that happen in the body don't astonish me at all. It makes perfect sense. If it didn't happen, I'll be, I, then would I be astonished? What did you expect? What, what, I don't know what people expect. I heard about a preacher gathering his preachers, chasing out all the other people that came for the minister's conference, saying, I want only the pastors. And tell them how many of you have, you're having an affair right now with your, with your secretary, with girls in your church. All of you. No, nobody responded. He said, listen, if you don't, indicates now i will cross you you will die you will die. but then they now a massive throng massive throng marched out in another instance a international recognized preacher went was called to be a minister's company with a group and, and and he said how many of you have been committed adultery either within the last one or three months you committed adultery last one or three months of their life oh, 70% got up. Active, present tense, active adultery. You don't ask why. You wonder at the ones that don't. It's not hard to know why. The word disciple is where you get the word discipline from. If you've not been discipled, how will you be disciplined? Who discipled you? God can disciple you directly. But better still is if there's God with a human being. As I explained earlier on, a lot of my discipling came straight from the Lord. It's one reason why I don't walk under weight of obligation to anybody. I remember praying and crying, saying, God, give me somebody to disciple me. I tell the people I lead often, you guys are so blessed, you're so lucky. I was discipled primarily by books, messages, and other things. And wherever I was, I'll find a church and be part of it steadily. No inconsistency. I see people inconsistent. I don't know about being consistent. I'm not talking about that thing where people stay at home and say, no, I'm being discipled by the Lord. I never did that. I wouldn't miss any church meeting. Come back from work by six. Even when I had a job as a core member, as all of that, I'll come from the law office where I was, and I'd pass straight. Pass straight. I don't have food. And I remember the boss would stop to drop people. I'll tell someone through the window, another coming back, please, can you buy me a goosey there and bitter leaf?